from the depths instant tutorial. Well, hello and welcome to Jimmy's instant tutorials. We're from the depth, and today we're going to talk about APS Tetris. APS is the old name that has stuck for advanced cannons, and in the advanced cannons, we can align the different components in a way that is more efficient than other ways, and that's basically what APS Tetris is. APS Tetris mostly consists of having your you know, firing piece and stuff like that connected up to coolers that go down and uh, provide cooling for the system and connect together auto loaders, ammo clips, ammo intakes and ammo ejectors and also recoil absorbers. These are parts that almost any APS gun will need. All of these guns have a RPM of 13.4 the difference between these guns is that this is only autoloaders, this is a stacked design and this is the maximum amount of clips you can have and thus the maximum efficiency. Why do we have ammo ejectors? Well, if we don't have ammo ejectors, the shells will blow up when it gets damaged. When the ammo clip or the autoloader gets damaged, the shell uh, inside it will blow up. Now this thing uh, that's only autoloaders, and they will also blow up if they get damaged. For example, there you could see the explosion of the shell that was inside this autoloader. However, clips are more volatile. If you damage clips, the explosion will be bigger. Now, um, why do we have these ammo ejectors? Well, when this get damaged, the shells are ejected. When we are using this type of setup, we will need to make sure that our shell does also have an emergency ejection defuse. Otherwise, they will be quite dangerous when they blow up. Because then you might eject your shells into your vehicle. So if we do this again, you could see, bam, we damage, but you can see no shells are coming out. And that is because there is no need for them to come out when we have an ejection defuse. You can see here, nothing comes out. So, all these turrets are the same in terms of stats. But some have more ammo clips and some have less and some have none. Why is this uh, the same turret then? Well, on this we have 10 outloaders. On this we have 3 outloaders and the rest ammo clips, uh, amounting to uh, 10 outloaders and clips combined. And this is 2 outloaders and 8 ammo clips, and that is also 10 units. So this and this has the same stats. You can of course have um, ammo ejectors on to the outloaders themselves too, to just um, have it like that. Um, but the reason why we want to use ammo clips is that if we go in here, you can see the uh, 6 meter ammo clip. It costs 280 materials and the autoloader costs 420. So having clips can reduce the cost a lot. And you can see that, well, clips are, clips are cheaper and autoloaders are more expensive. So, the more clips you can fit on your design, the more cost-efficient the turret will be. However, say that we didn't have these ammo ejectors here, and your entire turret becomes a powder keg. You really want to have ammo ejectors, because when you do, uh, the shell gets ejected and with the defuse you don't even see them, but you really want to have ammo ejectors. There is, there is no circumstance where you should not have ammo ejectors. You should always strive to have a design that has ammo ejectors, ejectors and your shells should always have a ammo ejection defuse. So if you haven't done this before, you should start doing it from today. There is one exception and that is if you're having a real gun Basically, your shell doesn't contain any gunpowder, because gunpowder also blows up inside the ammo if this get damaged. So, if you have a railgun that uses kinetic rounds, that is solid stuff, sabots, kinetic, solid water bodies, just like that, no payload at all, then you can have, you can skip 
to have the ammo ejectors, pure railgun. But if you have the slightest amount of gunpowder in there, you will need to have the ammo ejector and the ejection defuses. So that is basically how it works. And do remember that these shells, they, they contain explosives, but this is not the most dangerous shell. If we would have frag shells, if this got damaged with a frag shell, it would still blow up the uh, entire turret because frag do a lot of damage internally. Now I will say that you don't have to have the emergency ejection defuse if you build your turret in a way that the ejected shells that come from out of here gets ejected into an area that is uh, not like dangerous. So if you just do like that and just update this, if the shells can be ejected into a direction that causes no harm. You don't have to have the defuse. But if you will eject your shells inside the turret, as I will show you in this tutorial, you will need the defuse. So why do we bother with having ammo clips? Because as I showed you, they can become a complete powder keg and these do less damage. Well, the reason is that Outloaders is more expensive. This entire system costs 5,200 materials, while this system costs 4,400 materials, and they do the exact same thing. However, this setup is a little bit safer. And since the um, Outloaders can be replaced with an ammo clip connected to an Outloader, this is not more space inefficient either. This and this has the same space efficiency. When we're dealing with stacked turrets, they can provide almost the same um, like cost efficiency. It's 4,500. 4, so this one is of course a bit more expensive than the one here, but it does the same thing and it's easier to build this type of setup. The stack is a really good setup for a lot of turrets. This is my preferred method in most cases, just having a stack like this. So I'm first going to show you how to make the stack. This is just bad, inefficient and not a good idea. So just ignore this. This is just to show you that we can replace every outloader with an ammo clip instead. Uh, and this is the most efficient method and it's very well suited for very big turrets. First, I'm going to show you the stack design. This is a 7x7 turret design and we're going to do it with some armor in the front. So I have outlined this front as where we will have armor blocks because this is the minimal armor we can have on a turret like this. And do remember that as we're using the ammo ejectors, our turret will be much less volatile than it would be if we had skipped this part which you shouldn't do. One note, however, is that if you are making a turret that uses belt-fed autoloaders, your only option for fast fire cannons, really fast fire cannons that are not huge, um, well, you cannot actually have the ammo ejection defuses. So we have our one meter turret, we have EMP insulated the all-in-one weapon controller, so it's safe. And now we're going to go to advanced cannon and decide uh, what type of outloader we want. Preferably, we should probably decide the shell size and then decide the, uh, well, outloader length we need. So design your shell and come back with, uh, well, what size you need for that. So let's say this turret will be a four meter outloader setup. So we're going to add a stack of outloaders. We can add a couple of them and we can add more or remove them to balance it out because of course we will need to match this with the recoil absorbers and the cooling. And when we just add this stack, you might guess we will need to add ammo clips. There are the ammo clips where which you can see the shells and the ammo clips where you can't. If uh, it doesn't have a st aesthetical, uh, like if it doesn't matter, just choose the one where you can see the ammo clip because that saves on resources for your game. When you've done that, you will need to have ammo ejector. Either of these work fine as uh, we're going to eject our shells into the turret, so it doesn't matter where it goes. You can just add this stack to the turret right there. So each of these outloaders have an ammo ejector onto them. On the free spaces, you can go and put some ammo input feeders. 
And remember that each ammo clip needs an input feeder and each outloader requires one. So for example, for this uh, setup here, you can see that the ammo intake limit is 13.4 because each outloader has one. Uh, on here, you can see that the um, ammo input limit is also 13.4 because each ammo clip here has one and each ammo clip back here have one because they can't and the autoloader doesn't have a connection for them so we have extra on the ammo clips on this side instead. You just need to make sure you have the right amount of ammo intakes where you put them matters less they will magically refill and restock the turret uh, in order anyways and uh, like each ammo intake adds to the pool but you can see even though this is the case even the, though these has two it's beginning with filling up this ammo clip so it's a little bit like that uh, so you don't have to care too much about where you put them just have enough of them and each of these outloaders doesn't have to be connected to a block like this uh, they connect to each other as well so they can just stack up just like that and of course, the shell we select will decide how many coolers, how many recoil absorbers we need. So this is the flat stack design Tetris. It's uh, basically just select the shell, assign them, and you will need to balance out where you will have the coolers and where you will have the uh, gauge increasers and uh, recoil absorbers. Exactly that amount of coolers we will need to have in order to make this setup. And then we'll just have to add some recoil absorbers. I just selected the shell we already used for these cannons here. And I scaled up the gauge to um, 330 because that means I will actually need to have these uh, large outloaders. The absorption is 2000 per second and the recoil is 1800 per second. So we could actually armor this turret up and uh, well this could actually be a finished turret. It's not a too bad design. There we go. And of course go in there, edit, make sure it has a ejection defuse there we go perfect there we can see this is a finished design which fires a pretty heavy shot every four seconds and doesn't get blown up if it gets damaged very nice Next up, we're going to look at the maximum efficiency type of design, which uses four clips per autoloader. And to do that, we usually have them vertically like this and not horizontally. Here you can see the kind of basis for this Tetris design. We have three coolers like this. We have an autoloader in the middle and we have four ammo clips protruding like this and an ejector. So we're going to build this inside here and uh, same as before, the red areas is symbolizing where we're going to need to have armor. So I'm going to build this unit a little bit backwards perhaps, but we're just going to try and do it with the 8 meter shells just because I want to show you that. So we can really get it to its extreme. And we of course need ammo like this. Ammunition, perfect, the ejection, yes. And then we'll need to add ammo input feeders. So we have one there, one there, and one there. That's three. We of course need four, five, two more. So where can we put them? Well, it depends a little bit, but we can put them like this. So we have one there and one there. And then in the middle, we can have some gauge coolers because we need coolers and we need the coolers to connect these up to each other. So one, two, three. And you see I have built this in the exact middle and that is because we might want to have some sort of room for having uh, recoil absorbers if we need to. Like everything depends a lot on the shell you have. So before making your cannon, you will need to decide what shell you want because otherwise you don't know how many coolers you need, you don't know how many recoil absorbers you need. I remember that railguns produce a huge amount of recoil for some really weird reason, that's just how it is. And um, having vertical spaces like this for railguns can be great to have recoil absorbers. 
and of course railgun chargers. Now you will take your prefab tool and just capture this prefab and you can see we can spawn this. So dependent on the Tetris you kind of need, if you want that free space in between, you can just add these blocks so you have like some free space. If we want the maximum density instead, then we can build a pattern that is as closely packed as possible. And then you can actually let things extend over the, the, the edge here and then cut it off if we want to. But it basically goes like this. We add a unit and then we just add another one without the ammo clips colliding like this. And you can kind of see we can kind of build a sort of pattern using this method. And that will be super efficient, very, very, very compact Tetris. And for the next layer, we'll need to line it up. We can't have them close as this because then they will try to share ammo clip and only one has, you know, the connection, so it won't work. So we need to offset it like this and connect it up later. And just as before, you can see it's colliding with nothing. And add another stripe there like there and there and there and the things that are sticking out well we'll just have to cut that off so we can add the armor later and you might get a small imbalance with the ammo inputs um, when we do type of super compact pattern uh, so then you'll just have to try and add more inputs wherever you can uh, I would in general have more free spaces, uh, but well, this is something we can do. And say we can just connect these up a little bit quickly here by doing like this. Make it a 500 millimeter turret. Now this uh, this shell won't be, uh, uh, it will be not as long, but whatever. Assign it to all intakes and we can see that now we have a cannon that shoots pretty big shots every um, two seconds. And of course, uh, this is the limit, is the cooling limit. So we'll need a lot of cooling units and the recoil, as you can imagine, is pretty big. So in the gaps that we have, like for example, here's a gap, you can see this one. Here we can actually add a recoil absorber, 8 meters, down like that, perfect. Let's see if we find some other gap, here is a gap, there is a gap, and you kind of get, we have some free space here, we can fill it up with more materials and stuff like that. And we of course need to add armor around the turret, um, yeah, but if any part of this turret gets damaged, but um. Stuff won't blow up, it's all fine. We have the ejectors, we have the defuses, it uh, just works. So, I hope this helps you dealing with some APS Tetris and it explains the outloaders and ammo clips and that's how you can set up your turrets. Do a stack like this or do this type of pattern and you can get these type of chains just connecting them up and having a very efficient type of setup. If this did help you doing some APS Tetris, well do indeed like this video and do subscribe for future tutorials. If you want to get some uh, new tutorials that you haven't seen in the playlist below, well then you can suggest them in the comments. This has been your host Jim Anism, and we're signing out from Instant Tutorials.